Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. Another snow day show. Crystal, what do we have in the show? Indeed we do. We've got Jordan Sheridan on. He's got some really important reporting about an Amazon worker who died. He's going to bring us the details there and the fight that her family is continuing to have with that company. We've got Ryan Grimm on. He's got some some analysis on why the Republican strategy from 2009 with the Obama White House may not work this time around. And on that note, we want to start with that big relief meeting at the White House yesterday. That's right. So we had 10 GOP senators. We gave you the names of those guys yesterday who gathered at the White House. It's actually a pretty long meeting who were all there in the Oval Office, including Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, and many of these others. Basically, they are pressuring, pressuring for a $600 billion version of the bill. And now we have you know countered and seen what exactly is within that. It's an extension of unemployment up until June, but it doesn't include state and local aid. It would actually reduce the threshold on the checks that were going to go out. And broadly, what it is, is it's total deficit hawkery, Crystal. I mean, it goes to the false narrative that they're like, well, we already spent $900 billion and we need to assess the effect that that has on the economy first. I mean, we knew from the beginning, this is the most infuriating thing, that the $900 billion at that time was not enough even then. And so if anything, this is just a backfill to the months of Washington just doing absolutely nothing. And ultimately, look, this is, this is very clear. Biden by he's, I mean, this was like a two hour or something meeting. They were in there for so long. I think he genuinely enjoys the appearance of bipartisanship and all of that. Okay, you know, I think that's great. I think part of that is why he's president. But, I mean, every single day that you drag on, once again, is one more day that you don't trigger budget reconciliation. I know that the House passed a resolution yesterday and we're calling, drafting, and all this, but it takes a really long time. And more than that, there's no firmness in the strategy. What is the Biden strategy? Is he all out committed to 1.9 tr- uh, to the 1.9 trillion dollar figure? I don't know. Not really. The statement that they put out from the White House was like, well, it needs to be much more like the White House plan than the Senate Republicans plan. So you're already negotiating against yourself. And Americans don't really have any certainty whenever it comes to what the hell they are going to get at the end of this. And that is a huge communications failure on Biden's part. Yeah, so this meeting feels a lot like what return to normalcy, I guess, is. Um, Let's be clear, the Republican plan isn't serious. They're more than a trillion dollars off in terms of the price tag. Like, this is not a serious offer, the 600 billion. It shouldn't be treated as a a serious offer. Mm -hmm. And yet, after a lengthy meeting, everybody came out and was like, oh, it was productive, and sure, we didn't solve it all, but we're in a good place. Susan Collins said, It was a very good exchange of views. I wouldn't say we came together on a package tonight. No one expected that in a two hour meeting, but what we did agree to do is follow up and talk further. Now, what I will say is given that he was gonna have this meeting and at least pretend to entertain their plan, the best possible uh, scenario is that it's just for show to be like, (laughs) see, I tried and I had him here. And it does actually appear Mm -hmm. that that's the direction that they're heading in. Before we get down to that though, Let's just show you how unserious the Republican plan ultimately is. We have some numbers here on how dramatically different what they're offering is versus what Biden is offering. I mean, on the direct payments alone, first of all, as you know, if you've ever watched this show before, Biden already knocked the direct payments down from 2000 to 1400. The Republicans want to knock it down even further to $1,000. They want to further means test it. That would leave tens of millions of Americans without getting a direct stimulus check. They have zero for state and local governments who are really struggling, a lot less generous in terms of unemployment insurance. Not that the Democrats were being overly generous either, but a lot less money there, a lot less money on schools, reopening. The same, the only one area that's the same as direct pandemic response and also small businesses, less for childcare, zero for rental assistance, zero, and nothing for child tax credit, which is kind of weird since that's like been a Republican Mm -hmm. um, priority as well and something that has bipartisan agreement. So um, basically their offer is wildly unserious especially when you consider, I mean, Biden's 1.9 trillion is a lot less than could and should be done in my view. I said this yesterday, I'll say it again, like 
it tells you a lot that the minute that Republicans send out what is a completely, you know, pathetic and inadequate plan, they score a meeting at the White House. And yet progressives who've been pushing for what would be incredibly popular and appropriate $2,000 per month rather than one time direct payment, um, they don't really get their views or concerns heard whatsoever. Now, partly they're less willing to put pressure on than the centrists and the corporatists, but I do think it is um, an important statement of values there. However, I wanna say that it looks like Biden and his team at this point are committed to moving through the budget reconciliation process. Pelosi and Schumer officially kicked that off yesterday. That is exactly what they should be doing. And now the question is the one that you raised, Sagar, which is like, do we actually end up with anything approaching 1.9 trillion? Mm -hmm. They seem to be already negotiating themselves down, saying, hey, we'd be open to more means testing on these direct payments. What else are they going to be? open to changing and negotiating down because there's reporting out that Joe Manchin still not satisfied, thinks this is too much money, is worried about whatever he's worried about. So um, we're a long way from figuring out exactly what this thing is actually going to look like. Yeah, that's no, that's correct. And this is the biggest problem that we have, which is that when you're already negotiating against yourself, Here's what's going to happen. Not a single Republican is probably going to vote for this at the end of the day. I think it'll probably get 51 Democratic votes by negotiating, giving ground, having the meetings and more. You're again muddying the waters and presenting the implication that you're willing to negotiate or more. And I really don't understand it. I don't. I mean, look, Republicans like Obama said it correctly and Obama uh, Republicans like to use it against him. They're like, yeah, elections have consequences. That's why the moment that they got elected, they triggered budget reconciliation on Obamacare because that, that was something that they thought they needed to do. They didn't even try in order to get Democratic votes. I don't really understand. Like, I don't this isn't a way that anybody really would govern in any, anybody except for Joe Biden. And actually, Connor Lamb, as you pointed out, this is like the most moderate of moderate Democrats, you know, the literal guy in the Trump swing district. Let's put his tweets up there on the screen just about how the median income in Western PA is 60K, which means that half of their people make less than that. And if you're in that group, there's no question that the, which COVID release proposal is better for you. You get $400 more right away from the Biden plan. You get $1,000 more in checks. And as he points out correctly, which is that the unemployment system does not capture people who have had their hours cut or for people who have slipped through the system, that it's actually a catch-all whenever you have checks that can plug in the holes that our relief effort so far has not been able to make. Checks last time around substantially dropped poverty and increased consumer spending. It was like a two for one, one of the best deals and one of the best things the U.S. government has ever done. And for some reason, nobody seems to want to follow up on it. So I just think it's incredibly ridiculous. As you point out, the White House put out this statement after the meeting, basically saying that they're not necessarily going to give ground. But again, they are saying that it needs to be, quote unquote, much closer to the Biden plan as to what the Republican version is going to look like. And so wh who are you negotiating with is the real question. If it's Joe Manchin, well, those efforts probably need to get stepped up because uh, the first one didn't go so well with Kamala Harris. And I just think broadly, the lack of clarity from Biden to the American people every single day is a notch one or two points down on his approval rating every single day in the long run, because people very clearly elected him for one reason, at least in the state of Georgia, whenever it came down to a referendum on the $2,000 checks and you better deliver and you better deliver something and be very clear about what it is that you are delivering. And he's just not being that right now. Yeah, I mean, the Connor Lamb comments are noteworthy because he represents you know, a district that Donald Trump won in Pennsylvania. It's very blue collar, working class, like former industrial area. And he's unafraid to say unapologetically, like the Biden plan is better. Not, no deficit hawking, debt reduction, like none of the mm -hmm. crap that we heard back in 2009, 2010, that's encouraging. Um, on the other hand, I think that what we've seen from the Biden administration is in a lot of ways, the story of the economic response to COVID the entire time, which is just this incredible lack of urgency. You know, when, when Biden said checks would go out immediately to people who were trying to make rent or trying to put food on the table or trying to keep their lights or their water on, um, immediately means like, 
right now because exactly. we need the help right now. Exactly. Not like I'm going to have this extended process and hang out with my Republican buddies for a while and think about which direction I want to take and eventually get around to it. Probably, you know, by the time this all comes through, probably in March. Um, the other piece of this is that it's a weird thing with the Biden administration because I think there's a lot of understandable grading them on a curve for two reasons. Uh, number one, because the last year has been so hellish mm. <laughs> thanks to the exigent circumstances and thanks to Donald Trump. And so the fact that he's even having like a serious process and that the 1.9 trillion isn't laughable, like there's some really significant things in here that are going to do a lot of good for people. So, um, you know, the fact that you have this, that direct contrast between both, you know, just the last year being so terrible and Donald Trump being so terrible and Biden at least running some sort of reasonable process with a reasonable expectation of what the outcome is. I understand why people want to be like, this is great. You know, this is like such an incredible improvement. This is way better than what we were getting with Donald Trump. But that's true. It is way better than what we're getting with Donald Trump. But when they are deciding now, OK, it looks like we're just going to pass this with Democratic votes. That means like this is a moment to, to seize on, not just to fill in this specific hole that's been created over you know, the past months with the coronavirus crisis. But like this is a time to really change the trajectory that people are on. Mm -hmm. we've, what we've seen over the past year is a massive upward transfer of wealth. That's going to have consequences that reverberate for decades. What are you gonna do to reverse that? What are you gonna do to try to make it so that people feel like they're invested in this country and invested in the success of this country and people feel like they have a pathway ultimately to success. So. I don't want to grade Biden on a curve here. I want to give him credit and especially look again, we don't know what's whether it's going to end up being 1.9 trillion, how many months of negotiations we have, how much he's going to be let himself be held hostage by Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. But I want to give him credit for the good things that are in there. But I also want to say, if you're not taking advantage of this moment to make those larger changes, then you are not actually fulfilling the promises and the bar that you yourself set in your campaign. I think you're hundred percent right. And I think David Pluff, actually Obama's former campaign manager, he came out and he warned Biden yesterday. He's like, look, you only get one shot at this COVID relief thing. This is it. You better make sure that you get it right. And so far, I, I don't think the results are that encouraging from a public messaging standpoint, because dragging your feet, it's day 11 now, maybe 12. I'm not sure exactly. But the fact is, is that if we cover this for a living, we should be able to play on this screen, Biden giving a speech being like, I'm doing budget reconciliation. Here are all the things that you are going to get that I'm not going to compromise on. And he's not doing that. I mean, he's muddying the waters. Like you said, immediately to most normal people actually means immediately, not the end of March with a bunch of budget stipulations that were put in by an amendment by Joe Manchin. And maybe that's how it ends up. And maybe it was inevitable. But you should at least be messaging differently. And you're right. Look, this is obviously better than what Trump was offering and what any of the like the Republicans on this are a complete joke whenever it comes to their offer on stimulus. But that doesn't mean that we should, you know, cover it in a way in which just like being better than Trump, being better than Trump is like the baseline, man. Like that's what you were elected for. If you actually want to be successful, then you got to actually go really big. I think he should really heed the words of David Pluff. And, you know, we'll see if he does. Look, the way that this could have gone differently is if he came in with very clear, like, here are my things, yeah, which are absolutely non-negotiable. And then, and I made this point before, but I really want to make it again because I think it, it matters a lot. Democrats have a habit of looking at people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema like they're these like special flowers to be protected, rather than recognizing, hey, these people got tough re-election fights potentially coming up. That's leverage because guess what? Joe Manchin is out of step with where his constituents are and what they need on these issues. Well, that means you can squeeze them. That means you can push him to your position. But instead, there's always this view of like, oh, we got to just do what he wants because he's in this vulnerable, vulnerable position. No, the fact that he's in a vulnerable position is a place of leverage that you could ultimately use. Um, the last thing we wanted to give you a little update 
on a story that we covered yesterday. This is amusing to me. So we brought you the fact that Newsweek put out this um, obnoxious, <laughs> obnoxious article yesterday that said the original headline was Joe Biden critics falsely claim the president lied about $2,000 stimulus checks. Now, of course, you all have heard and we have heard Joe Biden in Georgia saying $2,000 checks will immediately go out the door. Now it's $1,400 checks and they still haven't gone out the door and they're not going out the door for some time now. So it was mm. not a false claim that he lied about the checks. So they apparently were so berated by people recognizing that their article was total BS, that they had to change the headline, change the article, and basically like try to rectify the situation. But it was just one of these utterly shameless attempts to carry water for Joe. And the funny thing about it, too, was like I read through the article thinking they were going to make an affirmative case that his critics were wrong about this and they actually didn't. They yeah. just said like, here's what his comments were and his critics say he lied about it, but they didn't actually explain why they thought that his critics were wrong. So now the headline of the article more accurately reflects the reality of the situation. Well, a victory for media everywhere. <laughs> Very low bar. All right, we're gonna tell you what we're looking at. That's next. 